This video is brought to you by Aiming Hobbies and Raceline Designs. Click the links in the description below. You see, I think I owe some of you guys an explanation. Not too long ago I did a poll about which e-bug you guys would like to see in the future, and the Myco MX-8E was the winner of that poll, at least at the time of this recording. Now, the reason why I'm doing the Agama N1E instead is because one of my patrons and good friends, Morrison Wad, decided to lend me this buggy to run for the year. With that explanation over, let's begin with the video. The Agama N1E is the latest e-buggy from the British company known as Agama. And it's been in development for a little while if you've been paying attention in the world of RC racing. However, it would seem that everyone's collective thoughts of the actual buggy went along the lines of something like just saying neat and then buying a Sparco instead. Which is kind of a shame, considering the fact that in terms of design, it's a very unique buggy. Now this isn't going to be a full-blown review of the buggy as I haven't had it for too long as of the recording of this video. And as of the recording of this video, I've only run it once. However, I will also be doing a long-term review later on in the year, probably at the end of the 2024 outdoor season, as I go to many different tracks in the southeast, including Buggy Land, North Georgia Shootout, Peach Day Classic, and Wicked Weekend. Now before we talk about how the car did on the track, how about we take a look and see what makes the car tick and what makes it unique compared to other buggies on the market today. Before we address the obvious, why don't we take a look at the innards of the buggy itself. If you guys are privy to my online presence outside of YouTube, or you looked at my previous two streams, you'll have noticed that I mentioned that the buggy didn't initially look like this when I got it from my patron and good friend Morrison Wad. When I got it, it was in the saddle pack configuration. However, this is one of those buggies that can run multiple different battery configurations. Of course, there's the saddle pack system I mentioned before, the single 4S stick pack configuration you're seeing on screen right now, but you can also run a 4S shorty pack Mugen style, or run two 2S shorty packs side by side, like a TLR style. Other than that, the buggy doesn't seem too different from other buggies on the market today. Standard front center and rear diffs, standard C-hub configuration, and standard gearing. What makes this buggy unique compared to other buggies on the market today is the usage of these laid down shocks both front and rear. They use cantilevers attached to each arm which attach to the shocks which are then attached to these little posts where the shock tower would normally be. It's a deceptively simple setup that gives you a consistent shock feel throughout its throw and keeps the center of gravity as low as possible to help with corner speed and, well, flipping over if you're like me. Now, the more astute viewer may have noticed something different about these shocks compared to the standard shocks that come with the kit itself, especially at the front. You see, the shocks and standoffs that come with the N1 stock simply aren't tailored towards US-style bumpy and large tracks, especially race time events like Wicked Weekend or even Psycho Nitro Blast. Because of this, VRP released a shock conversion package that gives you more droop, even more throw, and an even lower center of gravity. The other small change that this buggy has compared to the stock is the usage of a wing mount stiffener and Mayako progressive rate springs. By the way, remember when I said this buggy is deceptively simple compared to other buggies on the market today? Well that's because working on this buggy is surprisingly easy. All you need to do to remove the shocks is undo two M3 nuts and the shock kind of just slides off. Same thing with the differentials, specifically the front. The rear is a bit more difficult due to the need to remove the wing mount to end part of that holds up the diff case, but it's still not too hard. Overall, the buggy seems to be well sorted out and easy enough to work on, and in theory, it should drive pretty well. How about we find out? Now what you're seeing on screen right now is Loganville RC Complex when it was cold, dry, dusty in some places while also being damp in others. I'm running some web style tires, the VP Pro Spiderwebs in the softest compound, and I made some setup changes throughout the day along with the tire chains to JC or J Concepts teasers in the green compound, which were a bit more suited for these track conditions. Initially, it was slightly difficult to get used to the handling characteristics of the car. It liked to fishtail a bit on corner exit and had a decent amount of turn in at speed. However, in slower corners, it wanted to push a bit. After making some slight setup changes though, I was able to remedy those slight issues and had a much easier time driving the buggy. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a concrete lap time because the timer was off during this practice session, 
but the Agama definitely felt faster around the corners than my HB did and responded better to a finesse style driving compared to other 8 scale buggies which respond more to brutal driving styles. It also tended to fly a bit nose high in the air, but I'm fairly certain this was down to my wing of choice as the one I was using was a high downforce wing from Raceline Designs. Later in the video, you'll see this thing on a more toe in in the rear and a lower downforce wing in the rear as well as that's what the car is probably designed for. After this, it was time for a track change, and this time we headed up to Rock Racing in Knoxville, Tennessee. This track was a bit higher in grip than Loganville RC Complex due to the fact that it was much smoother and more abrasive, even in the cold. Here, I made some more setup changes, including increasing the rear toe in and kick up by adjusting the C and D blocks, and I went down in shock fluid and spring stiffness in the front to help lean into turns a bit better. After making these changes, the car felt much better and overall faster. I also played around with different tires and such, mainly VP Pro Spiderweb in the softest M4 compound and JC Ellipses in this clay silver compound. Both worked pretty well, especially after burning in the J Concepts tires, but the Spiderwebs felt a little bit more forgiving. A fast lap on this track for most people would have been the 20 to 19 second lap time, and even though I wasn't able to get into the 19s, I was able to get a 20.3 second lap time during the mains. The buggy handled very neutral, if a bit tail happy on one corner, and overall I was very happy with how it handled. What I wasn't as happy with this car was its durability under certain circumstances. Most of the breakages I had were mostly my fault. For example, my very first run I managed to break a front arm and toe linkage after a very bad crash full speed into a metal pole. I was able to replace them with these ones from Techno though, and because they're from Techno, they're nice and beefy. So if you happen to break this specific part on your Agama and you need a spare but don't have one on hand, you can use these parts from the Techno EB48 2.1. Not really the fault of the design of the car though in terms of braking though. What kinda is the fault of the design of the car is the mounting point for the very front shock. The shock specifically gave me a few issues, mostly with different hardware backing out or braking altogether. The two main culprits of this would have been the lower shock cap and the screw that goes to the shock standoff. Now I am aware that Leadfinger makes a front wing that goes over the front shock to protect it and that will alleviate some of the issues I had with it, and I do plan on going with it for future runs. Overall, my first impressions of the Agama N1E and the VRP conversion kit have been mostly positive. It handles well both on a looser, bumpier track and a tighter high grip track, and with the exception of the front shock, it held together quite well. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I will be running this buggy at a few different events in the southeast such as Tennessee State Race beginning in March, the North Georgia Shootout in April, and a few other races in the year depending on what pops up. Once the year is done, I will conclude my full review of the buggy as usual, so be sure to stay tuned for that, and be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon, where I post updates and teasers as to when my next videos are going to come out. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my active patrons Michael Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Joe Jenkins, Rob Bettingfield, Caden Merckx, Ian Petrie, Logan Jutkins, and especially Buddy Howell and Morrison Watt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.